Good morning. Um, my name is David Ondekar. I'm the business unit manager for Transport, uh, as well as aftermarket services. I'm uh, sure it's a great pleasure for you to see me today. The transport section is all about vehicles that Xylem owns. Um, no, it's not. I'm just checking the technology break. We basically look after all the pumps not related to the watering. So wastewater, key water transport. Um, part of transport also includes uh, monitoring control, uh, so that falls under the same umbrella. And I was listening to John's talk a little bit earlier, and it was just so nice to get that, that fresh air again. I've always said it's very difficult to innovate with one thing. Um, you have to be particularly brilliant. So for the rest of us who aren't, you need two things to innovate. And if you can get a pump to get with a monetary control system, or you can get a motor to get with a VSD, there's a lot more that you can do than, than just a pump. So a great opening for our, um, our data today, so thank you very much for that, John. Enough from my side. Um, it is my privilege this time to introduce my colleague from Italy. And my wife is Italian, so I only know swear words, so you'll excuse my, my pronunciation. So Giovanni Mugnolo is close. Um, he is a mechanical engineer by trade, uh, based at uh, <coughs> the Warra factory in Italy. In, in <coughs> he has been with Xylem for touching on three years, and he is the training manager for the whole of EMEA, so that's um, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. He will be sharing a lot of information today, more specifically about systems in the building industry, and not particularly about products. Uh, he has another session later today where he will talk about that. So, Giovanni, the mic is yours. Welcome.
uh, target uh, high efficiency, certification for potable water. This is uh, almost mandatory now in Europe. There are more than 25 different uh, potable water certification in Europe. Range to cover all the possible requests and of course reliability. Even in this case, uh, we cannot uh, not give water in a building. Wastewater, drainage and sewage is more a part that is handled by someone else and they are going to speak a little bit about this this afternoon. So, let's start with um, heating and conditioning. Systems. The systems can roughly be divided in three categories. Single pipe systems is the oldest system to condition our heating system two pipe system with supply and return and uh, hybrid systems uh, it started uh, more or less uh, 20 years ago and uh, today is the standard in Europe especially in all the new buildings when you have solar panels or geothermal unit because uh, we, will, we will see it's easier to connect uh, this new system with uh, an existing uh, heating system so single pipe system the single pipe system is the easiest system, has uh, a big advantage that the gravity is a source of energy, so there is a low energy consumption. The fine coils have a good temperature and humidity control. The disadvantage is uh, the low temperature control, the flow that is constant, so the pump is working always at the duty point, the high expenses for the pipe work, and the balancing. In this case, the system must proper balance in order to give heating or cooling. In this case, we cannot, uh, we don't have to divide uh, or uh, the two kind of system. And uh, most of the time, you need balancing valves uh, to in order to protect uh, the uh, the, the nearest zone uh, to the system. Here, you can see a way a system with the three way valves. This is uh, a possible solution in order not to have problem of heating of cooled, overheating of overcooling in the nearest zone of the source or the two pipe distribution system. This was the common system used in Europe and the United States in the Northeast part uh, from the 70s up to the mid of the 80s. In this case you were able to divide and to zone the building in different zoning and you can close with the thermostatic valve a different zone according to the request of the system. So, in this case, the big advantage is that uh, we can change the flow and so we can save pump power and we can have a better control. The fan coils has always a good temperature <coughs> and humidity control and the temperature in its uh, fan coil is constant. The disadvantage is that the source sees different uh, flow coming inside and uh, there is a variable temperature in the return system. You know that uh, can be a boiler or can be a chiller. The difference of the temperature it must be as much as possible as constant in order to have always the same energy consumption. And uh, even in this case, uh, you need a proper balancing. And so balancing valves uh, and, uh, are mandatory. This is uh, another uh, system here. This is uh, with a constant uh, flow and a multi-load system with the bypass. In this uh, in this way, the chiller or the or the boiler see a constant flow along among all the piping. The fan coils has always a good temperature and humidity control. The temperature is constant, and in this case, we can use a variable speed system installed on the pump in order to use. Uh, to save energy, you can use in this case or a differential pressure transducer or two different pressure transducer, or if you want a temperature system. The disadvantage that you need a bypass system to balancing the heater or the trigger emitter. This was one of the solutions designed in uh, at the beginning of the, the 90s and of the 80s that was changing the distance between the last zone or the first zone from the source with the first one. 
in order to have the same, more or less, to have the same friction losses or the same return inside the system. So the distance from the pump should be more or less the same in every single zone. And so in this way, we have the same pressure drop and the branch one gets more flow than two and three and the design aren't as predictive. So in this case, you have to use a balancing valve. This is a reverse return with uh, a variable flow, and this is the combination of the two. This uh, is one of the most used systems in Italy. This is uh, common use in uh, medium large blocks apartment system, and uh, is uh, good in terms of uh, energy saving and energy balancing. Balancing valves are still used in, uh, until now, the balancing valves in the peak systems are still used in order to balance properly and not to add too much noise inside the piping. But uh, in this case, uh, the, the system is already well balanced by the piping design. The advantage of this reverse return is that we can have a, a, a really good energy saving and we have a temperature in each coil that is constant. The disadvantage is that the source can see a variable flow, but this is, can be overjumped by using a variable speed system. And the flow through the coil is throttled, so you can have variable return water, you can have a variable returning water to the source. And the last but not the least, the variable flow system with the bypass. This is uh, common used in the chiller, so for cooling. In the, why it's used? Because usually the source requires a minimum flow. And uh, in a chiller, a lot of contributing until evaporator performance became stable at low flow, with the Reynolds number is less than 2000. So, how? As valve close, you have a different across, a different height across the evaporator that is reduced, and the controller sends this and opens the bypass valve to maintain minimum flow, mixing cold supply water and warm return water. And this is the last solution. It's used in all the new system is usually a primary and is called primary secondary. We have also the primary, secondary, and tertiary. In this case, you need to add what is a common use that is, sorry, I'm missing the English name. Heat exchanger. <laughs> and uh, in order to, but in uh, this way, you can have a higher temperature and you have a better control on the source and you have a better control and a better flow control system in the other zone. In this way, you have a high flow and a low head pump and the pump derives part of the flow, forcing the flow through, through the return piping. The four pipe system is not anymore used because uh, it was used in the combination system, uh, what we call the heating pumps. Today, the heating pumps are usually connected with the renewable energy system, that is a solar panel or geothermal unit, uh, and so this uh, is uh, the common system that is suggested uh, by the designing uh, offices. We have also floor heating system. Okay, this is uh, common use in those countries where, where it is very, very cold, as in Sweden or in Germany. These are systems that are using and uh, are uh, heating properly the house because they are following the heating curve of the human body. And so you need less temperature to warm properly all the houses. It's, uh, you need uh, smaller pumps you need a better control system. Usually these uh, systems are connected to a BMS or to a control panel that is monitoring uh, con continuously the temperature inside the, inside the rooms in order not to stop the pumps and not to stop the systems. 
So you need a, a control system. All circuit should be balanced to give a good pressure drop. The pumps, the pump must be sized properly. But the flow heating system requires higher heat of system for the same size. But they are heating better <coughs> your pump. Of course, as I was saying, it's also a matter of the new designing of the houses because you don't have to put any radiator or fan coil in your house, so you have more space in your apartment. It's uh, more healthy because you don't have the same dust that you have with a fan coil or with a radiator. Of course, the installation cost and the cost of the system is much higher than a common one. This is the main reason why it's used in all those places where the heating is more or less mandatory. Solar panel system, this is uh, now luckily the most common system that we have in Italy because the sun until now is for free. And so we are using a solar panel system to heat our houses and to heat our water, to wash it. In this case, we are using, this is the classic primary secondary. The primary circuit is a closed loop system. Inside, uh, usually there is water with glycol in order to keep uh, the water in uh, the liquid, uh, in the liquid solution. There is a pump that is making this, um, this mixing, uh, circulating constantly. And uh, there is a boiler, usually filled with water, that is uh, heated by the sun and by the water with glycol that is running inside the first circuit. And uh, you can have hot water for your house, or you can also connected to the territory and having a heating system. In uh, the most, uh, in the last uh, system, we have, you can have also a boiler that can separate properly the different temperature in order to use the highest temperature for the heating system and the lower temperature for the hot sanitary water. The, the chiller system are hybrid type and they require minimum flow. In this case, they are, they are heating pumps, and they have more one or more pumps. In this, in this case, I put an example of one chiller with two splits. This is the standard that you can have in one single house, one for the living part and one for the night zone. Hot water system. In this case, you have a boiler with a return system. Usually, this pump is integrated in the boiler for the small apartments, for the big blocks are, is outside, is keeping the water circulating inside and keeping the data constant in order not to have a high energy consumption. Which kind of pump you use for heating and conditioning? You can use the wet rotor pumps. This is the last technology that has been developed in the last uh, 10 years. They are called uh, ECM pumps. They are using what is, uh, they are using uh, using a permanent magnet motor that has uh, a very a very high efficiency compared to a standard asynchronous motor. Usually they have uh, an inverter for the big one or an electronic card that is commuting the speed. This pump uh, can work uh, at variable speed or at constant speed according to the system. They have an anti-block technology. They can be connected with the BMS system via Modbus or Bacnet in this case. They are using for heating and sanitary hot water, but also for cooling. These pumps can work from minus 10 up to 110 degrees. The same, uh, the, just to give you some numbers, the cost of one of these circulators compared to an old standard circulator, three speed, six speed, is less, the, is less than one year, according to the cost of energy in Europe, that is around 0 0.20 cent, euro cents per kilowatt. Just because it seems to be this pump is four meter, three cubic meter per hour very small pump. But uh, it's running continuously. And it's, uh, li it's like a lamp. 
even if it's very small, it's consuming a lot of energy during the year. The, uh, the University of Munich, Germany, made uh, a real experiment that was performed for five years. At, uh, at the end of the day, they discovered that this small circulator is consuming more or less 150 euros per year of energy. That translated uh, in... Thank you. <laughs> 50 hundred rain. And, and uh, the new one is consuming 30 euros. So less than the 75%. Why? Because this, in a heating on a cooling system, the pump is uh, working at 100%. So it's working at the duty point you select more or less the 10% of the inter life. The 75% of the inter life of these circulators are working at the 25% of their duty point. Using a variable speed system can allow you to save uh, tons of kilowatts. Of course, uh, these pumps uh, has a maximum flow of uh, around 55-65 cubic meters per hour in a single version, with a maximum head of around 12-15 meters. So for the big system, you have to use uh, a dry run pumps. But what we suggest today is to use always a VFD system both for heating and for cooling, in order to save energy. Water supply. So let's move on the other side. So the main problem in a water supplying is the request of water. Because usually the water consumption is never uniform. You cannot know how much water the end user needs in during a day, during a season, is changing according to the habitats, according to the time. This is, for example, a, st a study made in uh, a blocks of six apartments in Italy. The, the test was performed for one year. And you can see that, uh, of course, we have a peak in the morning and uh, another peak during the evening. But this is just an example, because if we consider a hospital or a hotel, it can change a lot. And what is required by your end user is to have a different flow, but having always the same pressure. Because you don't want to have the last inhabitants, the top floor, that cannot have water, because everyone is using water at the same time. So for the water supplying is common use booster sets that are pumps installed in parallel. You have a fixed feed with a continuous running system. More or less uh, in, uh, at the beginning of the 70s uh, we start to use the, a fixed feed with a control switch installed with a vessel in order to win the small friction losses and the small water consumption and not let the booster set start. And, uh, Starting from the 90s, we start to use the variable frequency driver. So, why you should use a variable frequency driver? So, first of all, to ensure constant pressure with a variable capacity. And it's really to, it's like changing the pump according to the water demand. You are changing the pump, you are changing the duty point according to the water demand, even if you have just always the same pump. For sure, to avoid hydraulic shock, what is called the water hammering. This is a huge problem, not only in the building services. We have uh, this problem also in irrigation and in the industries. Thanking the fact that you can have a soft start and a soft stop, you can reduce the pressure inside the piping and you can avoid water hammering and problems during the start and the stop of your system. You increase the lifetime of the bearing. You know that the bearing of the motors are strictly related to the speed of the rotor. The rotor is, never, is not working at 100% all the time, and so you can increase also the motor life. And you can reduce also the noise level. If the motor is not working at 100%, also the noise level is moving according to this group. 
and this is one of the most important part we were speaking uh, in uh, the previous presentation to reduce the power consumption according uh, to the affinity law you can see that uh, the power of a pump is strictly related with the cube of the speed just to give you an example if you have a power of 10 kilowatt and you reduce the speed of about 5 hertz that is the 10 percent you reduce this, the motor of one side is a 7.3 kilowatt the power consumption and this is almost nothing the reduction of the flow is less than the 10 percent and the reduction of the head is around 10 meter and usually when you select a pump especially for the big system you are always oversized a little bit your duty point and this is an ex a real example it was made in a heating plant where the pump is running continuously and this is at the end of the day after one year the kilowatt that we were able to save with just one pump with 11 kilowatt of motor power as uh, I was saying you can see that uh, in a heating system it is making cooling during the summertime and heating this the 80 percent of the time the pump is working at around the 50 the 25 and the 50 percent of his maximum capacity is the his duty by its duty point and so to ensure a constant pressure to avoid hydraulic shock to extend the bearing light and to reduce the noise level but above all to save energy and this is uh, why i strongly suggest to use always a variable speed system in a building service just uh, some uh, of our application this is uh, a project that we ran at, uh, in uh, Russia, this is the new Moscow library that was uh, completely rebuilt uh, at the beginning of the year 2000. This library uh, was founded uh, in 1776 by the Tsar Elizabeth. In this case, we were realizing the heating system with uh, an inline pump. In this case, uh, the circulator with the ESEM technology was not enough because you can imagine how big is this library for all the Moscow University so we use an FCS series pump inline pump provided with the DFD system the same with the cooling system for the cooling system we use an FCE because the pump was installed inside, inside the chiller and so in order to save space we decided to use an extended shaft instead of a stub shaft option and for the water supplying and booster sets equipped with our ESV is a vertical multi-stage pump totally made in easy plant for RAS and ACS, ACS certified for potable water equipped with our viral frequency driver the tallest world the tallest tower in the world this is the Burj Khalifa is in Dubai this was one of our biggest challenges of the past 10 years we won part of the tender and we realized that the complete irrigation system in this case the challenge <coughs> was the fact that uh, the water was not is not coming directly from uh, a water tank or uh, the the system of the from the municipality but is uh, coming from the humidity of dubai we are recycling the humidity that is deposed on the window of this tower in order to use it for the irrigation Dubai it's a very hot city but it's very very humid so there is a lot of humidity and in one year we are able to recycle more than 120 million gallons of water that is around 20 Olympic pool and we use them for the irrigation of the system so even if uh, we are in Dubai, and I can tell you that they are not taking care so much uh, about energy saving, we decided to recycle the water because it's one of the most important things that they have there. After, we provide also system 
for the, the water supplying. In this case, uh, we are moving more than one million liter of water every day. <coughs> and I can tell you that we are not providing the water for all the tower. You, this picture is showing uh, how tall is it, but you should uh, see it uh, to understand. Just to give you an example, the, only this part uh, is in a hotel with more than 300 suites, uh, because it's the Armani Hotel in, in Dubai. This is part of the building that we are providing with water. And so we installed booster, different booster sets according to the requirement of the different stages that are equipped with our ESV vertical multi-stage pump, but we, use, we used also big, bigger pumps that are made in our factory in Austria that are the MPB and the MPV pumps. And we use also the SHE and the SHS pump that are end suction pump that are used for the chilled water for the chillers. The temperature inside <coughs> the Burj Khalifa is always kept at 19 degrees. I can tell you that in this moment, today in Dubai, there are more than 52 degrees. And so you can understand how difficult it is to keep the temperature of these big tower is 829 meter tall in the middle of the desert because uh, this is uh, Dubai. All the pumps are made in AC 2016. This, one, this was a request coming from the, um, the end user. The last but not the least, the Agra and Lourdes hospitals in Portugal this was, in this case, we realized the whole water system. What I showed you at the beginning, all the water that is inside this hospital is provided by the VARA and flight pump. So we have water supplying with our booster set. In this case, it is even it is always made in Isaac and 16. The HVAC system that is made with our inline pumps. The sewage system with our GLV series and also the firefighting booster sets according to the European standard. <laughs> Any question? <laughs> <laughs>